If you haven't tuned into my last couple streams, you might not know that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's campaign is horrible. Actually, beyond horrible, it's shockingly boring for a Call of Duty campaign, and the story is just complete nonsense. I imagine the question on everyone's mind right now is, why did I of all people buy Call of Duty again, especially after last year's disaster, which I gave worst game of 2021? I wish I had an answer for you other than I like to torture myself and believe it or not I do enjoy Call of Duty's multiplayer to a point and it's been so long since I played a competitive multiplayer game at least for any significant amount of time that I was willing to give this one a chance as I did enjoy Modern Warfare 2019's multiplayer quite a bit. And the campaign released a week early so I just said fuck it I'll play it how bad could it possibly be? Well the answer is pretty fucking bad. So instead of making a proper video critiquing every little detail and just expressing my rage in the longest form possible, I decided that would be a complete waste of time because the vast majority of COD fans buy these games just for the multiplayer as that's where pretty much all of the replayability comes from. And so I'm going to do something a little bit differently this time. Consider this a stream highlights video with some post commentary where I deem necessary. So without further ado, here's the Modern Warfare 2 2022 campaign. Oh my god, I'm a sellout, guys. I'm a fucking sellout, synthetic sellout who plays shitty modern games he doesn't like. <laughs> Hardened. I played Hardened before and it was kind of horrific. I'm gonna be honest, so hopefully it's not as annoying. If they bring back Farah, I'm gonna lose my shit. Really bad. Dude, it's Ghost. Remember him? He's he's my favorite character. Personnel, armor and hardware, all Russian. What the hell are the Russians doing? Oh my God, the Russians are the bad guy again? Whoa, dude! I didn't I didn't see that coming. God, why is it that Battlefield 4 is like the only game that had the balls to make the Chinese the bad guys? I guess they just didn't care about Chinese money or something. I don't know. Uh, they don't expect me to jump off this, do they? Get your glass in there and find the general. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. Do you do you want to get ready to hear me complain about the lack of player choice whatsoever in in this? It's pretty fucking bad. Jesus. Fucking hell. Direct. Target destroyed. Looks, isn't that a fucking declaration of war? As well. General Shepard. Boy, I know that look. Are we at war? Oh my you god. You would be the first to know, sir. Damn right. I, I don't care. Talk to this guy. Sells a win, yeah. Dude, it's so. Remember so? I remember so. Fucking hell. Oh my god. I'm I'm going deaf. I'm going deaf. Holy shit. This is the world's slowest sprint. Sprinting isn't cinematic. You're not so sprint here. I know. I, I had free thought, guys. I had free thought for a second, and the game's like, what the fuck are you doing? Did I tell you you could sprint here? Yeah, right. Take off night vision. That does make sense. Uh, okay. Did I go down here? I, at this point, I really would welcome them just giving me an exact marker. Oh, I'm blind. You need to give me a straight line. I'm a dumb FPS gamer. If I don't have a straight line, I don't know what to do. At, at some point, it stops being ironic, and it's just true. They rebooted the ghost. Oh, uh, I think that was a woman. Yeah, okay. Don't stand out in the open. Got it. I understood. What? Mount is T. Mount is T. Oh, there you go. I just died. There's officially too many fucking buttons. I'm not hitting T. I've said this before. My hands are. Below average. 
Look, I hold it next to my face. All right, there you go. I've, I've, I've exposed myself. I'm not hitting T, though. Yep, that's me, dying in the tutorial mission. I bet you're wondering how I got myself in this situation. Well, as you probably could tell immediately, this is supposed to be a mounting tutorial. Well, I completely ignored that. Not to mention, you're supposed to notice these mines here and place them down, which I did, but I placed them in stupid places where the AI just walked around them and killed me. You can consider this the first of many silent or not so silent protests against this game's incredibly linear, forced, lack of player choice level design. Yeah. I wonder if I just, can I just cheat? Can I go way over here and just snipe them? Am I gonna get punished for this eventually? What the fuck? Oh, see, left the mission area. Thanks, game. It killed me for standing outside the plane. I thought for myself, guys. I'm sorry. I, I thought for myself. Like an idiot. What an idiot I am. You know what's my favorite part about sniper segments? When the snipers are so dug in that you can't see them, despite the fact that I can see a laser. It's a sniper! He's protecting the warehouse! That's where the prisoners are! Let's get there! Follow the Go! Oh, wait. I can see him. Oh, well, what do you know? That's an improvement. That's an improvement. I love how we're killing Hassan Piker in the first mission. I think that's that's good. I love the locked doors. Like, here's an idea. Oh, I would be this side, actually. Look, there's even a shotgun. You want to add realism to your game? Boom. Boom. Let me in. No. That that would be player choice. To when we secured the crash site. Are you saying we shouldn't have helped? Choices have consequences. Oh bravo, we got movement out here. Wow, what way. a badass line. Oh my god! Look at that! They give you an option to go on the box and you die instantly if you do it. Dude, I need cocaine to play this. His son has been passing out our ballistic missiles like it's fucking Halloween, and we didn't know about well, it. Well, he did say we he deserve 9-11. He did say oh, that. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. I think it's pretty obvious that I didn't pay any amount of attention to this game's story during the streams, so I will now attempt to explain it to you. The short version is, this is still a alternate universe prequel, much like Modern Warfare 2019. As to what the plot of this game is specifically, basically this Iranian guy gets blown up in the beginning, and the guy serving under him, Hassan, no relation to the Candyman's future victim, has acquired three American missiles, and obviously he's gonna do some bad shit with them. So it's up to Task Force 141 to track him down. I also want to point out that Laswell, this 50-plus frail malnourished CIA station chief, wants to get back into the field, which is one of the many sources of cringe and wokeness in this campaign. But before I get into that, let's get back to the highlights. I'll say the outside. You clean up the docks. Stay quiet. Stay quiet. Oh, I already fucked up the stealth. It took about 10 seconds to fuck up the stealth. Is that boat in there? Enemy down. I've only been spotted about five times in the stealth mission. I think I'm doing pretty good, guys. He just saw me through a wall. He saw me through a wall. You saw that. You saw me through a wall. Sh shitty ass bad game design. Alright, I think I got him. I think they're dead. Well, that door was bulletproof. Get down! I didn't even know there were enemies in front of us. I just wanted to see if I could kill people. Can I kill the normal people since I can't kill her? We gotta experiment. We gotta see the depths of the lack of player choice here. I must know. What? The game just fucking crashed. Game just let me commit to the side. Not very realistic. Oh, what the fuck? 
I don't care. Even though I, I blew twenty five hundred dollars in this computer, I have no shame in lowering it to medium settings. Wow. Yeah. I'll take the one at the bridge. Get the fuck. Oh, what too many, huh? God's down. Bridge is clear. Major Hassan Zayoni. <laughs> Literal Columbine prodigy. <laughs> at least I got the demographics of Europe right. Indeed. The beautiful, beautiful Europeans making fun of the Amerimuts. Look at this European. Look at this European. Very European people. I, I, uh... Yeah. So much better than the Amerimuts. Oh shit. Okay, this segment right here is the perfect example of why this campaign has horrific level design. You're supposed to take cover behind this wall, around this little outside seating area for this restaurant, but Captain Price is way ahead of you. If you didn't know that this combat encounter was about to start, there's no reason you would be standing all the way over here, and if you're not already behind it when the shooting starts, you're fucking dead. Now this is where the plot kind of derails and goes to shit, as it tries to be some kind of weird clone of Sicario, combined with some very dated political commentary on PMCs bordering on propaganda, as now we are playing as Mexican Special Forces, because as we just found out in Amsterdam, one of the major cartels smuggled Hassan over the border. And so Laswell has ordered Alejandro, who she apparently knows, to investigate. Honestly, my biggest problem with the rest of this campaign is that despite the fact this franchise is one giant recruitment ad for the US military, you actually don't play as an American at any point in this game. In fact, the only American character who's out in the field on missions is the fucking boomer CIA agent. Alex, the CIA guy from the last game, is nowhere to be seen despite the fact that Farah, the most cringy character in this reboot series, makes a cameo in this one as well. So instead of playing as some badass marine or navy seal or army ranger, it's up to former SAS and Mexican special forces to save America. I can't tell if this is supposed to be some kind of political commentary or not, but I gotta say it fucking sucks. Do not let Hassan cross the border. Ass yes, blasted Alejandro. Angry Joe's long lost brother. Whoops. I just killed that guy. Oh, I actually couldn't kill that guy? But he was gonna hit me with a baseball bat. What the fuck? Self defense. Nick Spence, thanks for two bucks. It's only a Zoomer game if it has genital mutilation. My god. Surely it's dark times for the Zoomers. Taking hormones, chopping their dicks off. 20% of them are LGBT. It's truly over. Is it at least better than Vanguard? Yeah, I mean, Vanguard's... Hard to tell you boys apart from cartel. Where's your suspect? That's racist. Holy shit. He deserved it. He was a racist cop. We gotta phone Sam Hyde. No, let him burn. He ain't looking too good these days. He lost all the hair after his his roid abuse. I've never been to Mexico. This is Mexico. I love how everyone's pretending a dude with a skull mask is like a normal thing that we should respect. It, it fits like late 2000s edginess, but it, it's kind of weird now that culture is kind of flipped. I mean, I like it. I like the edginess, but just in a realistic setting, it's too goofy. Guns on the street is jurisdiction of the police. Where are the police? Nuevas Almas has a very serious problem. There are a few here to uphold the law, and many of those who resist corruption disappear. What about the military? Well, because we're well trained. Soldiers are recruited by the narcos. Why not you? We grew up here. 
calls us vaqueros, cowboys. We love this place, and we will die fighting for it. Die defending a shithole full of crime. Sounds about right. And it's with this level that the campaign really starts to take a turn for the worse, both story-wise and gameplay-wise. The first major gameplay issue is the inclusion of armored enemies, and no, not enemies in juggernaut suits, but enemies just wearing armored plates like in Warzone. Now, it's no secret that the campaigns for these games basically serve as, I guess, a tutorial for multiplayer. Now, obviously, the AI is far more stupid and simplistic than a human, but at least you can familiarize yourself with the mechanics, right? But these armored enemies are by far the most obnoxious fucking inclusion of this because it commits a major sin with shooter design in that enemies do not react to your shots until the armor is broken. And this armor more than triples their health. Normally, it only takes a couple shots to kill an enemy with most guns. With this armor, it's going to take at least half a magazine unless every bullet hits him in the fucking head. And you would think with enemies this tanky, they would maybe add only one or two per encounter. Well, for the last few missions, they're in every goddamn enemy encounter, and there's usually at least three. It's so fucking annoying, and you'd think to have some kind of semblance of campaign progression, they would at least give you a heavy sniper rifle, or maybe give you some armor-piercing rounds, as I believe that was a thing in the gunsmith, right? In 2019? Maybe I'm misremembering? But no, most of the time you're still stuck with standard-ass assault rifles or SMGs. A goddamn grenade to their face only breaks the armor, it doesn't kill them, it sucks. It sucks so fucking bad, man. And they only add more and more annoying elements from here. Oh look, they still have the no stock weapons. I'm curious to see if they fixed it to make the recoil more stupid, cause like... You know, having an assault rifle with no stock is dumb. Alright, let's test it. Yeah, no, you can still hold that on target. Yeah, that's stupid fucking Call of Duty bullshit. Extraction. Fuck. Uh, guys, I went off the linear path. I went off the linear path. What was I thinking? What was I fucking thinking? Is this campaign good or is it coach? <laughs> it's oh, it's okay. It's okay. It hasn't gotten bad yet. Now, Modern Warfare 2019's got bad about maybe like five missions in or something. So it might be the same with this one. We'll have to see if they have another strong independent female character who takes up half the fucking plot because that's what they do with Farah in the last one what what the fuck you guys saw that right what was i supposed to do there it's a platformer now suddenly i like it suddenly it's a good game because you can play it for Oh, th there's an invisible wall. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I hate these fucking games. This doesn't make any sense. Can we talk about how the scene makes no sense? I'm supposed to be using the rocks as cover, but what's stopping them from just standing on the ledge and shooting directly down and killing me? This doesn't make any sense. Oh, fuck. Since I, once again, was paying absolutely no attention at this part, I'll fill you in on the plot. Here we meet Graves, the leader of Shadow Company, the fill-in for Blackwater, the infamous PMC that was involved in some major controversies that I'm not even sure I'm allowed to talk about on YouTube, but I would advise that you do some of your own research as pretty much every instance of a private military corporation appearing in fiction like Metal Gear Solid 4 or Deus Ex Human Revolution or many other modern military games often paints PMCs as cartoonishly evil and incompetent, which couldn't be further from the truth. Does Modern Warfare 2 handle this any differently? Of course not. And so Graves is our obligatory white male villain for the game but they try to distract you from this fact by giving you a level where you take control of the guns on an AC-130, which is pretty awesome for the first five minutes. Oh, I can use 40mm now. 
Sweet. Unfortunately, this level is 20 fucking minutes long. The game almost doesn't want you to have fun. It's weird, because, like, the multiplayer is constant action. Like, it's actually too fast, too much adrenaline and shit. And then the multiplayer, like, the single player is slow as shit. Like, what? why is this happening? You're the commander of a foreign terror organization. I can say the same to you. What's your target? True. I'm a hostage here. This is illegal. You are a prisoner of war. Iran is not at war with Mexico. I've broken no laws. I want this bastard in permanent custody or looking up at the goddamn grass. General, killing Hassan is an act of war. Keeping him is illegal right now. He is too hot to hold. All right, so this is when the plot gets completely fucking stupid. So we spend all this time trying to capture Hassan, and when we finally have him, we can't hold on to him because it's illegal. He has diplomatic immunity. He's a fucking terrorist who smuggled missiles into the United States. You really think that the government wouldn't find a way to make him disappear or have an accident? and end up in Guantanamo Bay being waterboarded and having his fucking testicles shocked till the end of time? Are we really expected to believe this? This is just straight up fucking propaganda at this point, because the US government good and bad guys bad. We've never done anything wrong. And honestly, in this case, they would be completely justified, obviously. The bad guy does have missiles. Why wouldn't we be torturing this guy for information? I mean, really? This is so fucking stupid on so many levels. God damn, dude. How did anyone watch this scene and be like, yes, this makes sense? Uh, d please tell me we're not playing as Boomer Chick. No, don't do it. Are you fucking kidding me? This would never happen, ever. This is like the most unbelievable bullshit they've done yet. <laughs> No. no look, I'm touching grass, guys. Finally, I did it. Now eat the grass. That is the next step. They never tell you the next step. You gotta touch grass and then eat grass. Then you'll be a true normie. My god, why is this so slow? I'm about to shoot Price up his ass. I can't. Of course I can't. Why would I be- There we go. This is like- I, like, what do you want, man? This could be a fucking cutscene. There's no reason I need to be playing this. Try to anticipate their paths. If you have to maneuver, do it slow and steady. No quick movements. Well, if I just get behind him, I should be fine, still. right? No way. That's too close. They would notice you. I mean, look, the boots aren't even covered. What the fuck? I was literally right behind... <laughs> All right, I'm right... I'm like sniffing his anus here, so... I'm, I'm not even gonna look at the screen. God damn it, it's the fucking last guy. This hurts. Do you know how bad this hurts? I want I want to die right now. God damn, I want to die. I'm expecting to believe you can evade that with no cover and concealment. Give me a break, at least smile for fair one. They did cover and concealment. No, dude, we're like invisible. It's tall grass, bro. Clear, nothing inside. What do you under? What don't you get? This we're can't... we're <laughs> in super tall, thick grass. You can literally see oh through God. this. I don't know. This is cringe. What's your favorite weapon? I don't have one. Gotta use the right tool for the job. God damn, she's so lame. Well. You can't even answer the question. What's yours, Kyle? Oh, we'll say DMR. I guess that's all the DMR. options. Rapid engagement of multiple mid to long range targets. Interesting. Whoa, dude, she knows oh, yeah. her stuff. Well, you're such an enthusiast, as well. Did I not just predict not the dialogue? Person, did I did I did I not that. just call exactly what he was gonna say? Well, Are you fucking it, fuck you? Talk a rich environment. Affirmative. Call tell all over the place. Done up. Two hours later. Uh, where did that bullet go? Bullets. You I can fuck that up. Get one. That was close. I got that guy. How about we be more?
fuck. God damn it. Uh, that would have been so cool, but they were too ready. They were too ready. The game never yeah. lets you do anything Let's cool. You told me two notches. That's what I aimed, fucker. I love, I love when they slow down the sprint. That is my favorite fucking thing. Favorite. Dude, you don't know how much I wanted him to pull the trigger. You don't know how much. I was so ready. There she is. Dude, did they make her uglier? Dude, I think they made her uglier. Captain, it's better. It's time. Like, they I think they made her eyes twice as big. Like, her nose was already huge. They gave her bug eyes. She, like, killed the Russian guy from Punisher. You know, the huge one? Like, there's a dude with a gas mask on in the previous game. And as like an eight-year-old girl, she stabbed him to death. It was the worst fucking, I, it was so bad. So as you could probably tell by these remaining highlight clips, I was starting to get pretty low energy at this point for multiple reasons. The main reason being it was already past midnight at this point, and guess what? There's over three hours of game left, and I decided to finish it anyway because I really didn't want to stream this campaign again. So the actually entertaining moments get pretty thin from here on out. I do want to say that this mission was actually legitimately good, which again you wouldn't be able to tell because of my low energy, but I actually think this was a really clever tutorial for the vehicle controls for Warzone, while also being a legitimately exciting mission. Definitely a bit too uncharted for my taste, but even going back to play the original Modern Warfare 2, which I did the very next day after this stream, this series has always been bombastic, over the top, and unrealistic, especially the Modern Warfare games specifically. So let's just say, I had a great time playing this mission. I wish there was more like this in the game, but unfortunately this is probably the longest segment of just straight up shooting with no scripted sequences, no forced stealth. And of course it's the most fun because we play these games to fucking shoot things and have crazy stuff happen, that's the whole fucking point. Do I jump? Why are you stopping? Wait, what? Security vehicle. Make you come Shit, it really is like they really are teaching how to play Warzone. This is like Warzone driving. Mad Max. Oh shit. What just- did I run over an explosive tank? What the fuck was that? Oh no. Oh, they're mines! Oh uh, shit. Oh no. Woo! That was close. <laughs> How is that my fault? Take another vehicle, guys. We need to spread out. <laughs> so what do you want? Cringe. And this is where the campaign goes to shit and it never quite recovers, as our next mission has us trying to find El Sinombre, a mysterious cartel boss that nobody knows the identity of. And so it's up to Soap to infiltrate them with valuable information, and it turns out that the cartel boss is a woman, though they try to fake you out by having her be the torturer, but considering that her model is obviously more detailed than some of these other surrounding ones, and she's given so much screen time, and it's extremely fucking cringe, by the way. No. Te vale que nos dé algo porque si no, 
Luego de que mate a este vato, el que va a estar No, come on. The cringe, it continues. There's only so many ways I can say it sucks. Immediately then you're given a spy mission, a sort of hitman ripoff, I guess, except with extremely limited mechanics. I just don't understand why games with no stealth mechanics keep having forced stealth segments. Now it's not actually forced, if you get discovered you can still shoot your way out of it, and I did. But I got discovered because there's no fucking indicators other than your compass for if an enemy is spotting you, and I didn't even know he was there. Because there's no radar, there's no way to know if someone is at your immediate right or behind you other than just going as slow as possible. And believe it or not, the worst part of the mission is actually when you finally find Valeria. As the developers clearly didn't test this part, as due to bullet penetration, you can very easily kill her, even though you're supposed to capture her alive. I think I accidentally killed her three fucking times without even aiming at her. Uh, which one was she? <laughs> What the fuck, Dude, I'm not shooting her. What's Ready? going on? I think it's bugging or maybe bullet penetration. <laughs> Guys, what is happening? Ready? So eventually you capture Valeria, aka El Sinombre, and we're given the most pathetic interrogation scene I think I've ever seen. Honestly, I don't even know if you can really call it an interrogation. They ask her some questions. She either dodges them or just yells at Alejandro because, ooh, they were both in the same unit in the military. Who the fuck cares? Nobody gives a shit. This is kind of important. There's a missile in the United States right now. And do you think they torture her or even slightly incentivize her to give up the information? Not really, no. It takes the fucking PMC guy to say, oh yeah, I might torture you if you don't tell me what I want. And then she just gives up the information instantly on the condition that they leave her alone and just let her continue her business. So anyway, on to the next mission. With the information that she so easily gave up, Valeria has told the gang that the missile is on board an oil rig. And so I guess this is supposed to be a throwback to the original Modern Warfare 2, which had a mission where you saved hostages on an oil rig. Well, instead, this time, you're trying to abort the launch of this missile. And it's actually a fun mission, because guess what? You just shoot guys the whole time. You shoot guys out in the open, you clear rooms, there's a part where you're on the deck of a ship, and as it's shifting back and forth, the shipping containers shift as well, making the cover actually move, which is actually a pretty cool idea. And it's only about 15 minutes long, which is the perfect length for a Call of Duty mission. If only most of the rest of the game was like this. Now, of course, immediately after this, another stupid thing happens. General Shepard betrays you and has Shadow Company try and kill you. We also learn that somehow they've taken over a Mexican military base and the entire town. Did they kill the military and the police and a bunch of civilians and shit? I guess. They don't really explain it, or maybe they do. Again, I wasn't paying attention and I don't really care. And so Ghost and Soap get away and are separated in this big city. It turns out this mission is a tutorial for a rumored upcoming Tarkov-like mode, because guess what? They added fucking crafting to Call of Duty, as if Call of Duty wasn't already a generic mishmash of different things from other games. The only thing it's missing now is RPG mechanics, and it really will be the most generic fucking game ever made. Oh, and guess what? It's another stealth mission, like the fourth fucking stealth mission or segment in fucking Call of Duty, dude. And I can't forget to mention that during this whole 20 plus minute segment, Soap and Ghost are hosting a podcast. I deserve one. I'm just kidding. You wanted a win. Congratulations, you're a winner. How I ain't Beal, you eat? English, McTavish. Sorry, sir. I'm a translate. Go fuck yourself. Much better. 
it's yet another modern gaming sin of constantly fucking talking to the player or you'll get bored. What the hell is wrong with normies that they constantly need talking to hold their attention? Isn't actually playing the game engaging enough for you? Not that we're even really playing a game during this part. This was just painful, and the worst part is, at the end you get ambushed by a shit ton of dudes, and I legitimately got stuck in that segment, and guess how I figured out how to win? I hid myself in a tiny room and just threw traps over the desk, over and over again until I won. I know it's low-hanging fruit to make fun of AI in video games as it hasn't advanced since fucking fear, but man, I am fucking tired of the same brain-dead aimbots that they call enemy AI. Well, since my brain was completely fried at this point, as it was nearly 3 a.m. as I was playing the last few missions of the game, I was becoming increasingly more frustrated and bored by the game as it constantly shifted pacing. And this next mission is a perfect example. You need to break into a prison that somehow Shadow Company took over, again they don't explain any of this, to break out Alejandro who was taken prisoner. And it starts off promising enough, even though I'm kind of sick of stealth missions in these games, again because there's no real stealth mechanics. At least I got to shoot some people, then they immediately fuck it up within five minutes as you have to once again engage in a CCTV real-time strategy segment. I don't really know what else to call it. If you remember in the last game you had to guide some woman to safety and it was horrific. Well, this is only ever so slightly better than that. When you finally grab Alejandro, you actually get to shoot things again, but very quickly it becomes annoying as they throw riot shield guys on top of the armored enemies. And between these two enemy types, it's killed any semblance of Call of Duty being fast paced. This has straight up become the stereotype of all regenerating health shooters, where you peek out, shoot a few bullets, hide back in cover till your health regenerates, peek out again. It's fucking boring. The best thing I can say about it is you're given a special backpack that can hold a bunch of different types of grenades. But again, I was so tired I didn't really take advantage of this. At the very end of the level you get to have fun for about 30 seconds as you're given a 50 cal and a grenade launcher that you can use to great effect, obviously. There we go. Finally something interesting is happening. And then Captain Price gives us the big twist of this plot, that it's all General Shepard's fault, as he's the one who lost the missiles to Iran in the first place. He was delivering them to an allied Middle Eastern country, I'm assuming Urzikstan, the fictional country introduced in the last game, and Shadow Company lost it to some Russians that ambushed them. Honestly, it could have just been a cutscene, it's a completely pointless on-rail shooting segment. And Laswell tells us that's the reason General Shepard tried to have Task Force 141 killed because they were getting too close to the truth. Now I want to point out that if you remember the original plot of the original Modern Warfare 2, that you now know that this new timeline has gone completely off the rails, there's no way this is going to tie back into the original trilogy, because General Shepard doesn't betray you until near the end of the original Modern Warfare 2, which takes place significantly after this in the timeline. Well, well, technically not, because this universe takes place later in the timeline. You know, alternate universe shit, you get the point. The point is Makarov isn't even here yet, and Shepard has already betrayed us, and Price already wants to come after him next. So whatever, who cares? So then we get a Call of Duty Ghosts reference, as the team decides to be Team Ghost for one mission. I have no idea why. I think it literally just exists to throw a bone to a game that not many people actually liked. But at least it's kind of cool to see Ghost actually put his real ski mask on instead of the stupid Halloween mask he's had on for this whole game. And it's up to Ghost's team to infiltrate the Shadow Company's main base and take out Graves. And so for the second last mission of the game, it's split between a half stealth mission and a full on assault on the base. And look, some of this is just my own poor gameplay, but I died so many fucking times in this mission. Half because I was so fucking tired. I'm gonna keep repeating this, but it was past 3 a.m., so cut me a little slack on this gameplay. But the other half was just straight up bullshit deaths from enemy placement that you had no way of seeing coming.
Dude, what the fuck is this game? The why are the why are they like it's an actual Call of Duty multiplayer experience. The the NPCs are camping. The NPCs are fucking camping, dude. Not to mention, for whatever reason, my game started crashing again. Now I'm starting to realize why they released this a week earlier. This is an open beta for a goddamn single player campaign. But I was determined to finish this, so even though it crashed like four or five more times, I still pushed through. And it sucked the whole way, dude. I was so ready to be done. But even when you get to the end and it's a tank boss battle where you just throw C4 on top of them three or four times, there's still one more mission. But first, we have a really cringy cutscene with Valeria, the cartel boss, who knows about the third missile and it's already in Chicago. I think I expressed my opinion pretty clearly on this during the stream. Now fucking leave las almas and go find the pendejos pa fuera. No, you, wow. ju you just put a bullet in her. She's yours. I mean, I, all this honor and heroic bullshit. No, she gave us the info. Now you just kill her, right? Like we don't need her anymore. She's outlived her usefulness. Kill her, right? Got down for what you did. It doesn't matter what I did. It matters what you can prove. No, no. If the U.S. government locks you up forever, uh, I don't. They don't need to prove shit. What, why? Is, who are they lying to? They're lying to the kids, I guess, and like really dumb normies or something. This is not how it works. And so for the last mission, predictably, we're in Chicago, and you start off by rappelling down a skyscraper and sniping some dudes, which is actually pretty cool. But unfortunately, it very quickly becomes obnoxious as fuck as you have to proceed through some server rooms with very tight corners and of course they throw enemies with shotguns at you that again have aimbots so if you peek at the wrong time you're fucking dead instantly. Eventually you fight your way to this penthouse suite that has like five armored enemies in it and I ended up getting a really shitty checkpoint that gave me some flashbacks to playing Halo on Legendary just fucking up over and over again but I refused to lower the difficulty because it's the last fucking mission. There's no way I was going to do that. So shortly after this encounter, we learn the missile has been launched. And so it's a race to get to the controls, which of course Hassan has. And Soap ends up having to go it alone, lands on top of the dude, and he's completely fine, drops his guns, grabs the missile controls, and the final boss fight is a goddamn stealth battle. This entire goddamn campaign has been full of shitty stealth segments. I guess it's only appropriate the final boss is another one. First, you have a timer to detonate the missile in midair doing a hacking minigame that was introduced earlier. And then afterward, you have to craft a gas bomb and a knife to gas the enemies and then stab them in the neck. There's only two of them, thankfully. And then you get a little cutscene with Hassan, you play his ghost for another two seconds and snipe the dude in the head. And the game's finally fucking over. The last cutscene is in a bar afterward, which has a little teaser for Makarov. Yes, they're going to bring back Makarov. And then there's a mid credit scene that's a teaser for the new version of No Russian, which will be on a plane instead of an airport. I'm gonna be honest, I really don't fucking care. I guarantee you, when Modern Warfare 3 comes out, they're not gonna let you shoot civilians. I just don't believe it. My reasoning for this? Both of these games have completely pussied out on any of the controversial shit that was in the original trilogy. In the original Modern Warfare 2, you could gun down as many civilians as you fucking wanted in that no Russian mission. And then, there's the Russian paratrooper invasion of the United States, where they're full on blowing up buildings, the fucking White House is on fire and they've taken it over. General Shepard betrays Task Force 141 and kills Ghost. At the end of the game, you even shot American soldiers who were working with Shepard. All this crazy different shit is happening. And what happened in this game? Uh, I don't know, uh, Iran has three missiles and they're working with the Mexican cartels. Okay. At least the last game had a waterboarding scene, even though it was pretty fucking cringe. 
Okay, so we've established the story sucks, what about the gameplay? Well, you already know my answer for this one. It's not quite as bad as I maybe have made it seem during the stream, because as I already said three times, I was getting increasingly more tired and more bored and more frustrated. I don't really think these campaigns are meant to be played through all in one sitting, but for whatever reason, half this thing was slow paced as fuck. And there were several different gimmick missions and gimmick mechanics, most of which sucked. Probably only three of the missions let you actually shoot enemies with the basic standard shooting mechanics for the majority of the time. Which is a damn shame because that's the best part of these reboot games, but pretty much everything else is worse, man. What happened to these simplistic campaigns that had a basic story set up for each mission, and then you just shoot guys in increasingly crazy bombastic scenarios? Now they've added all these new cutscenes, there's so much more dialogue, they're trying so goddamn hard to make Task Force 141 iconic because they want to sell you skins. That's really what this is about, okay? It's about monetization at the end of the day. If they can't make money off it, it's not worth their time. Fuck this campaign. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I will give it a brief mention in my full review for this game, but I'm just going to direct it back to this video. I really don't want to talk about it anymore. Despite only being seven hours, it felt like an extreme waste of my time. And honestly, even though I knew I would spend the bulk of my time with multiplayer and is the only reason I bought this game at all, it really has decreased my enthusiasm for playing multiplayer because I know I'm supporting a woke piece of shit product. Which I'll admit, I already knew that going in, but I didn't think it would be this fucking bad, alright? That's about it. I'll see you next time, guys, with the full review of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022.